out, Jed. Scott? Here. Waters? Here. Capron? Here. Gretkin? Here. Moore? Here. Can we stand for a moment of silence for followed by the budget? <clears throat> Under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, we have a lot, a lot of uh, boards and commissions. Bruce Kalin, are you here? I, I do not see him. It's always good to have you in the house. Rocky, thank you for coming today. You're looking good in that suit. You didn't have to dress up for us, but we appreciate that. So. <laughs> Well, that's good. <laughs> Kosovo Sister City Committee, Amanda Heitman. Come on up and tell us a little bit about yourself and why you want to serve. Good afternoon. I am Amanda Heitman. Um, my hometown is actually Holstein, Iowa, but I've been with the 185th Eric Yulin oh, down my. here full time for about 15 years now. Um, I actually had the privilege to go on a Kosovo State Partnership trip back in 2018 and experience Kosovo as well as their security forces over there. Um, I've been recommended by Brian Adams. He was on the Kosovo Sister Service Committee downtown and he recently took an assignment in Florida. Are there any questions? You sound like the perfect pick. <laughs> yeah, I'm really pleased that you made Appreciate an application it. and I, th you. I think you'll be a good addition to the committee. Thank you. Appreciate it. How, lo how long were you there? I was there for a week. It okay. was um, combined with the Iowa Army National Guard out of Des Moines. And then the air refueling wing also took some individuals over. And you're going, uh, are you going back when we all go for over there? Or? I'm not scheduled currently to go back. Oh. No, I'm the deployment officer in Sioux City. So I have right. to stay back and do the planning. Okay. Well, thank you for applying. Gotcha. Yeah, appreciate thank it. You. Let's go back because I was thank missing you. one on mine. Thank you. We'll thank let you. you know, okay? Appreciate it. Uh, Jeff Bold is from the Arts Center. I, yeah, my name is Jeff Baldus, and I am um, the chair of the art department and a professor of art at Briarcliff University and have been active oh. in the art center for 30 plus years um, and look forward to um, serving the art center in a new way again. Um, I was on the trustees for the art center, but it's been about six years, I think, since I got off. Questions? You've been you've very about active. Everything, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you've been very active with the art center, and so you'll be a great addition. Appreciate that. Thank you, Jeff. Thanks. Thank you. Jeff. Thank you, Mr. Kalen. Tell us why you want to serve on the Building and Housing Code. <clears throat> Thank you, and Bruce Kalen. Kalen's in your comfort. Well, I've always uh, believed in giving back to the community, um, service above self, if you will. I also have a lot of uh, respect for Daryl Bullock and what he does, and uh, he asked if I would be willing to serve, and I said, of course. And you're not retiring right away, then? No. Okay. <laughs> That's good. People uh, ask Lynn and I uh, when we're going to retire, and our standard line is, when we get older. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for making That's the application. One. That's great. You're welcome. Appreciate Thank your you. service. Thanks, yeah. Thanks a lot, Bruce. Thank you. Thank you, Bruce. Thank Appreciate you. Appreciate it. Parks and Rec Advisory Board, Brian O'Hara. Tell us why you want to serve to get those pickleball courts going, I know, but what else? I played pickleball once, wasn't that good. <laughs> we well, I saw it on your application here. Well, I've, I've I've been in use a lot of the city's uh, park and recreation facilities, a lot in the past and a fair number in the future. So, you know, I'm interested in what's going on in the parks and recreation department. I've only lived here all my life, but just two years when I was in the military, so. Questions? Uh, yeah, how many spots do we have? Parks and recreation. Three? Three, yes. And how many applications? Three. Got to hurry and get on before Thanks, somebody man. else applies. <laughs> I was going to say, how long then do we keep that open before and then it closes usually? We won't fill it until after, well, we'll ask your preferences after 
September 31st. So everybody's had a chance to get in because that's the expiration date. Okay. And then as long as no, nobody gets an application in at the last second, we'll All get right. it done as soon as we can. Glad you applied. I think you'll have a lot of fresh ideas to, to present too. So thank you. Thank you. Thank Thanks, you. Brian. Appreciate it. Robert Wolf. Thanks, Matt. Tell us a little bit about yourself and why you want to serve. I'm Bob Wolf. I'm a lifelong resident of Sioux City. Graduated from East High years ago. Uh, retired. Uh, see the service on the Parks Board as a way of giving back to the community. Uh, been involved in youth sports. Uh, uh, all my adult life from um, specifically uh, recreational soccer, uh, club soccer, uh, high school soccer teams. Um, enjoy bocce, riding bikes, hiking, um, just uh, as an opportunity to give back. Uh, the latest thing we've been involved in is uh, over 60 baseball team that we started last uh, summer here in town. Uh, Rick Saunders and, yes. and some others uh, that are playing. Um, so just uh, like to be active and uh, see it as a way of uh, serving. You say you went to East High? Did. Well, that's right away. Yeah. Hey. yeah. <laughs> You're in now. There you go. <laughs> you got one vote anyway. Okay. <laughs> How good do you have to be to be on that You're baseball? You're not good enough. I was going to say, let's go, Dan Moore. You better watch wiffle ball. Yeah, yeah, over no, swing. it is a, it actual baseball. We, uh, we've, uh, Who do I interview with to get on that team? Uh, you can. <laughs> we can trade votes here. <laughs> Trade <laughs> votes. I like that. Go ahead. No, we, um, <coughs> no, no, Dan. I didn't know, know we had that. That's no, good to know. Thursday yourself. morning. So. No, he's been practicing on wiffle I'm ball. I'm hurt myself. <laughs> uh, well, good. We're not afraid it's of that. You're talking, Mike. It's no, been let's good. get that right. Dan, we're pretty young ones. You can... No, that's good. You started you that. Got that. It's popular in a lot of places, but yeah, we. Yeah. Uh, I, How many teams you got? We're just just a team. Guys. One, one team, inner squad type of thing. Okay. I got involved when we were down in Arizona and, and saw some people playing, and I turned to Carolyn and said, I could do that. Good for you. So we've been. All right. All right, thank, thank, you. thank you. Thank you, Bob. Thank you. Planning and Zoning Commission and Board of Adjustment, Robert Anderson. Come on up, Bob. Tell us why you want to serve. Good afternoon, Bob. Hi. Um, I'd like to serve on the board because I think you need a licensed architect on the, on the planning board. And um, I've been here for, lived in the community for, what, 50 some years. <laughs> and if you ask me when I'm going to retire, when, I'll, when Dan retires, I'll retire. So. <laughs> Yikes. Yeah. Long way out there. Yeah, exactly. You better be ready for that. <laughs> But uh, no, I think I could be a, a, a plus to the to the. Do we have any architects on there now? Uh, you know what? This isn't one that requires. No, I know. I was just curious. I'm, we did though, didn't we, Jeff? We did. Yeah. Brian, no. Yeah. Cindy, I, I think there have been David. architects yeah. on the past. Um, Buck, um, what was his name? Jeff oh, Hanson, CMBA. Jeff Hanson, Community yeah. Development Operations right. Manager. We recently had Eric Coleman. Right. on as oh. an architect and unfortunately he uh, moved out of the city and so he lost his residency and we had to replace him so. sounds good I'm anybody glad questions? You applied. okay Thanks, thank you Bob. appreciate no, it thank you jed van hoff come on up and tell us why you want to serve hi my name is jed van hoff and um I was actually recently challenged. I went to a young professionals concert or um, conference, and they were uh, asking how we can get more involved. And one of the things that came up was planning and zoning, um, and just getting young people in there, people who are excited about the city, um, getting them involved in the community and things like that. Um, so I saw there was an opening, and I was like, "Well, might as well try." So um, I do this, and then I'm also involved in Sioux City Go, which is a young professionals organization in Sioux City. Um, and it's just something I'm passionate about, and giving back and helping make Sioux City a better place. How many positions do we have on that? Oh, two. 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 Still in planning and zoning, yeah. Two. Five applications. 
Well, thanks for your Perfect. application because I. You know, uh, thanks. Yeah, thank uh, you. We'll let you know. I guess it'll be thank appreciated, you, Jed. First of the year. Uh, Senior Advisory Committee, Christian, Kristen Hammerstrom. How are you? Good, how are you? Good. Good afternoon, Hello, Kristen. Uh, I applied back when there were no openings. I didn't know the whole process, but uh, I got a call and uh, there now are openings and I'm excited about that. Um, I have a passion for helping the seniors in our community. My husband and I own a home care agency and so I'm in the home of seniors uh, and their families and we hear daily what their issues are and um, I'd like to be on the committee to help serve and improve some of the challenges and barriers that are some of our seniors face. Well, I can tell you that I know Kristen real well because we kind of work together sometimes mm -hmm. and uh, you would be an asset. You, they would love to have you on the board. Well, I'd like to be yeah. on it if I could. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Definitely, I would, I would echo that same sentiment. Yeah. Good. Thank you. Yep. You're welcome. Thanks, Thank you. Uh, how many is left on that board? Two openings. Two, openings. Two applications, and we're about to see the second one. Okay. Shirley McLeod. Another qualified okay. applicant coming up. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Hi, Shirley. I uh, reapplied because uh, I've been on it such a short time because I took over from another guy that passed away. So I haven't been on it very long, but it has been interesting. And I would like to continue and see if we can't get some of these senior citizens getting some benefits. Sounds good. Thanks, Thanks Shirley. Absolutely. Shirley would be good. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Mayor, could I ask Jed? Jed, could I ask you? I, I meant to ask. I thought it was in here, and I don't, I'm not finding out what your occupation is. I mean, you've got the name of the company, but... You gotta come to the you mic. You gotta come to the mic, bud. You mind? I'd appreciate it. I sell property and casualty insurance for Farm Bureau Financial Services, so just like uh, home and auto insurance. Okay. All right. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Now is that all of them? Because mine wasn't right. So yes. I get through them all. Yes, I'm so I'm sorry. No, that's okay. I just want to make sure I didn't miss anybody. Nope, you did not miss anybody. Items four through thirteen D consist of a consent agenda. Consider those the items to pass. Plan update. Unless, oh, sorry. Strategic update. Keeping in mind, Jessica, that Nicole has a 5:30 basketball game. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not trying to put any pressure on you. I just want right. to understand. Um, Jessica Johnson, project management specialist in the city manager's office. Get this ready. Yep, got it. Thank you. I'm here to present the 2019 summer and fall strategic plan update. As you know, we have four strategic focus areas of our current strategic plan, and I will do a brief update under those four areas now. The first is to grow Sioux City. We had a busy summer and fall in Sioux City, but some highlights include the groundbreaking for the new $15 million Siouxland Expo Center. Construction has begun as expected to be completed in June of 2020. City Council approved a development agreement for the Arena Sports Academy. The 27 flag site in Southbridge Business Park achieved certification. And 2019 has been a record year for housing. Um, 351 new housing units obtained permits so far this year. Several positive projects continue momentum downtown. The Avid Hotel is under construction. Construction is in progress on the renovation of the Warrior Hotel. A ribbon cutting was held to unveil the newly renovated convention center ballroom and pre-function space. The adjacent courtyard by Marriott Hotel is expected to open next month. The Parks and Rec Department obtained a $100,000 grant to support the Chris Larson Park redevelopment. And the fundraising committee has raised over $2.5 million to date. And the 2019 West 7th Facade Improvement Program projects have been completed. Second focus area is to promote Sioux City. In a, the Sioux City was redesignated as an Iowa Great Place by the Iowa Arts Council. This will allow us to apply for grant funding to help with projects such as the Riverfront. The Morningside Library and Art Center underwent renovations. And over 2,500 children and teens participated in summer reading at the public library, which is an increase from last year. 
in an effort to improve tourism efforts in Sioux City, the Events, Facilities, and Tourism Advisory Board facilitated the creation of the new Sioux City Regional Convention and Visitors Bureau. The CVB is currently recruiting for a director and is finalizing agreements with area hotels and cities. The eighth annual Fall Fest was held in October and featured more than two dozen locations in Sioux City. And Sioux City is receiving more exposure and recognition as a place for businesses to start and grow thanks to our available entrepreneurial resources such as Makerspace Sioux City and Venture School. The third focus area is to enhance connectivity with citizens and businesses. <coughs> Sioux City Fire Rescue continues to engage residents with education and safety tips. So far in 2019, they have provided hands-only CPR training to over 1,000 residents. They also hosted their first ever Boys and Girls Club Youth Academy this summer and provided a scholarship to one of those students for future education as an EMT. They hosted open houses and visited all Sioux City Elementary Schools during Fire <coughs> Prevention Week in October. The police department has stepped up community outreach efforts in recent years. This year, they created the new community policing sergeant position to serve as a full-time representative for community policing. This is in addition to the community cultural liaison program. The police department hosted an open house this summer as well as coffee with the cop in October, and they just did shop with the cop this past weekend. The Sioux City and South Sioux City Complete Count Committees partnered to host a 2020 census kickoff event in October. Their efforts will continue to ensure everyone gets counted on April 1st. The Mayor's Youth Commission raised funding for the new Leif Erickson Park Disc Golf Course this summer. All three of our disc golf courses were developed with assistance from the Mayor's Youth Commission. The 17th annual launch week took place in November. The event consisted with, of a week's worth of events of workshops, startup presentations, and networking opportunities for entrepreneurs and young professionals. And Woodbury County became the first county in Iowa to achieve ACT Work Ready Community Certification. This gives local employers and prospective companies credible data on our workforce here in Sioux City and Woodbury County. The final focus area is to further community health, safety, and well-being. Work continues on the new street outreach program to assist homeless individuals. This year, 72 contacts were made, and of those, 21 individuals were either housed in some way or assisted back home to their families. The city recently received a $140,000 grant that will be used for a rapid rehousing program as well. There was no shortage of recreational fun this summer in Sioux City. City Pools saw a total of over 56,000 swimmers. Other programming included yoga in the park, beer yoga, tennis club, golf lessons, cornhole league at Cone Park, and pop-up parks that over 1,300 residents attended. Working to restore and protect our natural resources is a community effort. Over 1,100 volunteers participated in this year's Litter Dash, and 1.9 tons of litter was picked up at that event. Public safety is a priority. The police department reestablished a police bike patrol unit to increase community safety in higher crime areas. Fire Rescue placed four new ambulances into service and texting to 911 is now available. As you can see from this brief update, the end of 2019 was a busy one and is setting the stage for 2020 to be a year full of progress. Questions? Good Just job. Very thank good. You. Yeah, thank you for the presentation. <clears throat> Great work. Mayor and Council and staff, and it's been teamwork, really, to have all these things happen, all the positive events that are happening in the city. Okay, we'll go to the consent agenda, which is items 4 through 13D. Consider them to pass unless a separate roll call votes asked for. You want to speak on an item on the agenda, please come up as I read it. If you want to speak on an item... Not on the agenda. Please come up under citizen concerns. Remember to state your name and address for the record. I'll move the consent agenda. Second. Four is a reading of the City Council minutes of December 9th, 2019. Five is a resolution authorizing the police department to apply for a Governor's Traffic Safety Bureau Occupation Protect Occupant Protection Grant. Six is a resolution approving a policy of for subordination agreements administered by neighborhood services. Seven are actions relating to annual reports. A is a motion approving the Events Facility Tourism Advisory Annual Report. B is a motion approving the Sioux City Seniors Advisory Committee Annual Report. Eight are actions relating to agreements and contracts. A is a resolution approving a consulting services agreement with DGR for the Lions Park Investment Area Pu Public Improvements Plan. 
Is Jill here? I had a question about that one. Jeff, you got it? The only question I had about this one is I was reading through it and trying to get through it. And the only thing question I had, what is it looked like some of the cost was gonna be offset by possibly the grant coming in and covering some of that, is that correct? Do we want to wait until that comes in to know what that dollar figure is or you want up 251 just to cover that? Jeff Hansen, Community Development Operations Manager. At this time, we're anticipating between five and $10,000 in partnership with the grant opportunity. And so that wouldn't change your overall cost. It would just increase our cost of the 51,000 for the contract. Um, but that would be something if the council chooses to wait on. Uh, I don't have a good estimate on when that grant will come in, um, but that would be at the council's direction if you would prefer to wait. But our estimate at this time is between five and 10,000. So it'd be up to the 51 and then the 10 would come off of that. Is, your, is that what you're saying? Am I following? That's correct. It would come off with the partnership. And will that influence? That won't influence at all. We have the application and everything in. No, I don't think so. I don't know. Does anyone care either way or think it's better practice to go one way or the other? I'd... I think it's the program we want to be involved in. Oh, no, I agree. I, I believe in it wholeheartedly. I'm just saying whether we should approve up to the 51 or wait till the grant comes back and they say you get 10 grand and then we approve 41 or, you know, if it comes back five, whatever it is. I think the, the, the contract itself is still going to be the 51,000. That's the work that's being performed by DGR. It's just it's how just much of that 50, will be. Yeah. Correct. Gotcha. Well, then I'm fine with it going through then I suppose the way it is. I just wanted to check. Thanks, Jeff. He has a resolution approving a amendment number one to the contract to HR Green for additional services for storm drainage infrastructure in the Southbridge Business Park. C is a resolution approving amendment number one to the agreement with Black and Veatch for services for the booster station improvement project. I should have asked on this. What is this exactly? And where did we start with this that I didn't even know Black and Veatch was in town working? Brad Pitts, water plant superintendent. This stems from an agreement that was uh, brought to council back in June of 2016, where they designed both the 520 and Half Moon Booster Station improvement projects. In that agreement, uh, they also included construction phase services for the Half Moon project, but not the 520 project. So the 520 project uh, is out for bid right now, and we are bringing this amendment to award the uh, construction phase services for that project. So why was it negotiated way back then? Even though I hate they decided to hold off on it because 520 wasn't being bid uh, till well now three years later. So they didn't do it at that time. Okay, nine's action authorizing issuance of check. They is a resolution authorizing final payment to Grumman Hicks for the Zenith Water Treatment Plant Improvements Project. I need to make an amendment. So that payments are made jointly to Grumman Hicks and Merchants Bonding Company. I'll move the amendment. Second. Waters? Aye. Capron? Aye. Brecken? Aye. Moore? Aye. Scott? Aye. B is a resolution authorizing pay final payment to Subcircle for South Alice Street and Linden Way Water Main Replacement Project. I need to abstain. Conflict of interest. Ten is a Actions relating to property. A is a resolution authorizing the release of a mortgage to S and B Investments for 1215 Douglas under the CBG CDBG Rental Rehab Program. B is a resolution authorizing the release of the real estate mortgage for Alondra Del Real for 1620 Ingleside under the Neighborhood Stabilization Program. 11 is approved total payments and fund transfers for November in the amount of $25,065,116.99. 12 are applications for beer and liquor license. See the list come forward if you have any questions. 13, receipt of minutes. See the list come forward if you have any questions. Anyone to be heard on any of those items? Voting electronically. Passes 5014 is an ordinance amending chapter 12.12 .12 entitled Water Works of the Municipal Code to establish 2020 water rates for South Sioux City and Dakota Dunes. I'll move first reading. Anyone to be heard? 
you don't want to talk when we're going down, you just... <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> just sit back silent. Passes five zero. And anybody opposed to waiving statutory rule? No. No. We'll move it. Second. Capron? Aye. Brecken? Aye. Moore? Aye. Scott? Aye. Waters? Aye. I'll move second and third. Second. Passes 5 0. 15 is a resolution with an, of intent to support the Joint County City Building Authority pursuant to Iowa Code. I'll move that. Second. Anything we can do to help our friends on the other side of the alley? That's what we're here for. <laughs> Hold on just one moment, please. Dennis, could I ask you a question, please? Sure. You got to come, Mike. State your name and address. I know you're well known in the community, but Dennis Butler, 1818 South Helen, finance director for Woodbury County. Thanks for putting these documents together for us to review, and uh, I appreciate that. I just want to make sure, and you and I have talked about this. I just want to make sure we do have a letter coming on the on, road. Yes, we do. On the authority of the of the action. Of the, of the joint between city and county. That's that's in the works, isn't it? Yes. Okay. Yes. And they're in the process of writing the articles of incorporation, which the final one should be due, I thought, today or Tuesday. Okay. We had your legal counsel, Nicole, go through it, and we had our legal counsel go through it. They had some minor, small adjustments, which they incorporated on Nicole's. On our side, they'll discuss it, but I'm sure we'll handle that on our side. Say what? Right. right, right, but we aren't 16 yet. No. We're Correct. 15. Right, right. Correct. No, the, the letter I'm talking about, Keith, is the the one that Dennis and I requested of the attorney to state that we can do the joint county and city building authority with the arrangement we have with the city involved in the infrastructure improvements and the and the county actually building the facility right am i stating and that the correctly authority, the authority itself can only spend the money within the actual 38 acres anything outside that we work together on that but we are getting a letter on the road as part of the project because we need an access to the facility that is paved yeah i don't want to get anybody excited about this where it, it's just confirming what we can do yes. and, correct and that we have the authority and i just want council to know and the mayor to know that that we've requested that it's just something that we'll have and our packet of information that verifies that we can move forward as we are proposing to do. And Keith Radig, 3503 Broken Kettle Road. Uh, what he had said to us afterwards was that in order for him to send any more letters on that front, as far as that goes, he wants to make sure there's no conflict of interest uh, between the city because somebody in Allers already represents the city and he's representing the the future joint authority so Correct. he just wanted us both to pass that similar motion before he was going to put a letter together like that okay. so that's what he had said to us okay and my understanding of the preparation for the legal work is that allers has indicated they'll prepare the documents but they're not offering advice to the city or the county of the documents that's up to respective legal counsel for each entity that's my understanding from reading right. letters well, that there's some Because different. essentially the joint authority is what determines how everything is hammered out in the deal. So. The city proposes or will be using the city attorney. We'll be using you for that part of it. So I, I just appreciate, I mean, from the beginning with all the documents, Dennis and Keith, you've been very honest, transparent, and upfront about what we need. and and the Iowa code section that it takes to make this work and to be successful. So it, I just want you to know I appreciate that. And this is really a big deal. Nothing like this has been done to this size or the scope in the state 
as far as uh, anyone knows, there's only been a couple other joint authorities for small jail projects and one for a rec center. So this is kind of a big deal. So thank you for working together with us. Uh, I don't know that the jail gets built without your assistance and your help. So uh, thank you. Well, certainly it presents an excellent opportunity for the city and county to cooperate with each other. And I think we strive for that over the years. Sometimes we hit, uh, we have a hiccup or two because we just have a difference of opinion. And there's nothing wrong with that. I think that's healthy for a community to, to have that difference. But I think we can demonstrate that we, we can, in fact, work together. I, I think it's an excellent opportunity that presents itself. And, and at least for me, and I, I think the council, I, I think for me, though, uh, you know, I'll, I'll do what I can to show that cooperation. And, and I know going forward, there are going to be other uh, projects, Keith, you as chair of the Board of Supervisors and Mayor Bob Scott, um, you know, we'll need, we'll need your cooperation on things as well. So it's just a, it's just a good way to let the community know uh, the entire county and the city of Sioux City to know that the city and county um, can work together, even though in the past we've had, and probably in the future we'll have some differences of opinion, but that's okay. And in the spirit of Christmas, I'm already beginning to assemble that list for you. So. Oh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> and I do want to add one you know, more thing. You'd be, <laughs> well, you'd be disappointed if the mayor didn't have that. <laughs> you know what? I, I also want to thank the county for, for working together with the city because that, that is a huge deal. And when I first got on council, the big deal for me was the mega site, and we haven't done anything with that. So I think that should be our next big issue that, that gets addressed, and, and uh, it will benefit both. So... Um, I think that's a, a big deal here to also consider. So, well, and, you know, when I sat in Dan's chair there, I was always kind of disappointed at the lack of, you know, cooperation between the city and the county. And, you know, since the last three years, you know, we've worked together on the Riverfront project and uh, an event center project and, and now this. And I just think it shows our community that uh, local elected officials can get along, uh, you know, especially when we have, a, you know, Sioux City, Woodbury County, the best for the citizens and the taxpayer at, at heart, so. Yeah, you were, the, the county was very responsive and, and Dennis was, when, when I had, the, the concerns I raised I thought were valid, they were quite just questions that I had and you answered those directly and, and you just hit it head on and you didn't say that's not necessary, you, instead you just did the opposite and you said we can produce what you need to have to be comfortable enough to to go forward and proceed, and I, I really, really appreciate that because I, uh, I don't read between the lines very well, so I just really need to tell you what my concerns are and what my needs are, and, and it seems like you were able to, to deliver on that. So thank you for that too. Oh, I, I just want to add one more thing too. Leadership is a big deal, and you got to have good leaders surrounded by good people, and that's how you get things done. So with that said. Good job, and with that said here, good job to, to you guys for working with them. So um, we're gonna go far, and th this is because we all work together and, and you can respect each other and be transparent. So thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, gentlemen. Yep. Thank you. Anyone else be heard? Passes 5-0. 16 is a motion authorizing the mayor to execute a conflict letter with Ehlers and Cooney. I'll move that. Second. This is a very straightforward conflict letter um, that's necessary, and it just shows that, again, we're being transparent and upfront about anything that we need to be addressing. So I would urge total support for that for that item. I hit it. Mm -hmm. Oh, he did. <coughs> he was waiting till I was done. Thank you. Yeah, I Mr. Gretchen. <laughs> that there was That's more discussion to this point. <laughs> 17 uh, motion requested to delete the resolution approving the agreement with Hundy Strategic Partners for Consulting services related to the redevelopment of the Badger building. 
deferred from December 2nd, 9, 2019. I'll move for that deletion. Second. I'm Nicole. just going to call it. I can't. Please call. Nicole, I think I'm okay on this one. On the motion to delete. The vote. Yeah. Uh, yeah, to delete. Gretchen? Aye. Moore? Aye. Scott? Aye. Waters? Aye. Capron? Aye. 18 is a resolution authorizing the mayor to execute a letter of support for the Department of State's reception and placement program. I'll move that. Second. I really don't understand why we're having to do this, but if we don't, we basically don't have the services of the Mary Trump. Yeah, 18. There's something wrong with our government that makes us say we want to support Mary Trillia. That ought to be a given, but in the. Actually, support the uh, executive order. Again, I'll, Does just this let make... it, I'll just let it go today. And... Okay. <laughs> uh, Mayor, will this make Mary Troy eligible for funding or? No, I think you have nothing to there. No, I think it's just simply that we. By support... executive order, they require this now to allow them to operate in our city. It takes, it takes consent of the elected body to allow them to because at any point in time, there you could guys be elected officials that don't support <laughs> their mission. Come on up to the mic. I'm all for helping you out. I just don't quite understand why the federal government or whatever's getting in your business. That's my complaint. Yeah, I, I absolutely understand. Um, so name the an, president- Name and address, please. I'm sorry? Name and address. Oh, do I have to? No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, <laughs> everybody knows you anyway. Come on. I'm, no, uh, Becky Carlson, I live at, um, 3725 Jackson Street. And I work with Mary Trelli and the executive director there. Um, to answer some of those questions, the president has um, created a, uh, for resettlement of refugees, created some rules that we now have to um, abide by that weren't there before, so executive order stating that to be able to have refugees come into certain areas, we have to have approval by the um, government, not only state, but then our local government. So we, re we are considered a re remote placement center, so we do actually um, work with refugees in our community. Um, and in the past, we've had about approximately eight refugees coming into our community per year through the services that we provide. I mean, there's multiple different services. But to be able to have any refugees legally come here, we would need to have the approval of the council. So that's what we're seeking, so that we can say that we can accept refugees in our community. Thank you. Well, I certainly hope we never see the day where you have elected officials here before you that do not support the work that you're doing. So thank, thank you, you very much for the effort and everything that you guys do there. I really, really appreciate that. And thank you. like I said, I hope that day never comes. Thank you very much. Thank you. With this resolution being passed, does it, how does it help? So we, unfortunately, the number of refugees that are even able to come into our country has decreased to only 18,000 um, this next year. So there's no guarantee that we'll have any be able to come even to Sioux City, but it just allows that uh, availability to be an option for those folks that um, might want to come here and work in our community. So, thank you. Thank you. Thanks. See ya. Sorry. Rhonda, did you must have hit your button again? You ready? There you go. Oh, man. Passes 5 0. And the essence of time, I'm going to let it go. Citizen concerns. Any citizen <laughs> would like to be heard you're, today? You're all heart. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Gretkin. No, sir. Rhonda. Nope. Alex. Um, one thing I just wanted to bring up, and it's just to have a conversation with council, because I'm unsure. I know we spoke with, especially our legal team, 
before to get direction on a specific project, but I have a close friend and someone that I trust greatly that assures me that there's quite a bit of um, tax fraud still going on today um, here in Sioux City as far as some of our construction projects. And it's just troubling to me, um, I guess as an elected official, not certain of what we should be doing as far as some of the contracts to make sure that these individuals working on our job sites are, if they're employees, they're employees. If they're contractor workers, they're contractor workers. I just don't want people being shortchanged and um, getting injured or you know, and let, uh, left out to dry. And I think that that's something that, I, that concerns me greatly. And like I said, it's someone that I trust that is bringing that information to me. And I just, I, I apologize for being naive. I just don't know what else we could be doing with our contracts. I know Dave and I have spoke, I don't think it's necessarily on the roads or something that I'm not hearing about that. I'm hearing more on the construction side and we have a lot of development projects going on right now. And I think that that's an exciting thing for our community. I just wanna make sure that, that we're doing so justly and that our contracts are righteous. I would ask the question is, if we're giving city tax incentives, I thought we were writing that in the agreements that they had to at least have the ability to check payrolls. The only one that that's been written into to was the expo, right? Was the expo center so far. But I, I don't understand why you give incentives to encourage people to not do Those of us that are competing against those contractors, and I do to some degree, I've got to pay taxes and work comp, which is a huge number in our business. How is that? And so they come, these contractors or these developers come to us asking for help, and I think we ought to help, but they ought to be held to a standard that they're not going to allow, and they don't even know 90% of the time. It's not their fault. But they, they ought to be held to a standard that would require, it's against the law to do it the way that they're doing it. You can't have I, labor yeah, brokers I agree. down. And I, I, I've got to agree with Alex. There's got to be a way. Minnesota, the attorney general up there is just banging the heck out of contractors that are doing this. And they should be. They're, they're cheating on the unemployment. They're cheating on the state withholdings. They're cheating on the federal withholdings. And it's even taxes that would be coming back to us paying towards that. And there are broad provisions in our development agreements that the developers agree to follow all local, state, and federal Well, of course, regulated. yeah. But the question is, do we, do we want to add a provision where we have the ability to check payroll records? Because that requires staffing and know-how on our end to be able to do that. And I think that's a question. Dave and I have had discussions related to this. Well, it won't be that hard to check because once they start doing it, you find out right away. I mean, it's not, it's, the, it, these, where these sites are in Sioux City are the worst kept secrets in Sioux City. So. And that's where Mayor, I'm, and and that's not, where I'm just saying, I don't know what to do or what the next step is. I want it to stop. I want to do everything that we can that any contract we're awarding, you know, that we're a part of, that we're making sure that we're not part of that problem. I don't think you have a problem with the work. At Dave County Public Works Director, we've discussed with our contractors, and I haven't heard anything with the underground contractors. Or no, it's neighbors. No, it's, it's not that. Rock most. Yeah. And on the development agreements, we're not regulating or overseeing the award of the construction contracts on these projects. It's a separate. Yeah. That expose a little bit differently because the city was doing the administration related to that. Um, it's run by a separate board, of course, and there's a separate development agreement. But because the expo board didn't have the ability to have someone do the oversight, the city said that they would do that. And that's how we got involved in the bidding related to that project, which is different than what we would run a typical development agreement. We wouldn't have that oversight on the construction piece of it. Well, I guess we should check and see how they're doing in other communities. Because I was going to say yeah. that's... That's what I don't understand. I'm just looking to either the mayor or, or Nicole yourself. I just, well, it's, it's that's where I just, I'm not do. sure you what do to a do. Davis Bacon type reporting form. You put it in your contract that they have to comply with that on a development and it's not hard to do, but, but, but I still think we, uh, before we just start. And I can check with other communities, Des Moines and other large communities. Check up in Minnesota, because I think Minneapolis is doing it. Okay, I'll report back. I would just appreciate that. 
Um, the second thing I just wanted to bring up was um, I was able to go out to the first tournament held out at the arena um, sports complex out there and it was just great to see the energy, the atmosphere, um, and the incredible amount of people out there. I know the mayor was out watching um, grandkids as well and it was it was what I what I loved most about it was just the economic impact. I think there was a story that was done. I wasn't able to watch it, um, but I know there was a story done to that. And I know that they were talking about the restaurants and everything else when I was there about where they were staying and what hotels, what restaurants they were all eating at. The mall was crazy. Uh, Lakeport Commons was crazy. I mean, all of these things. It was just great seeing the hustle and bustle and that many people into our community and. Um, I think what was it 40 teams and thousands or 80 80 teams right like 5,200 people yeah so I think it was just a great addition and I'm excited that um, uh, to see some of that come to fruition and I, I know this is phase one but I'm excited to see what the future will hold and um, wish them all the best of luck and was happy the city was able to be a part of that project that's all I have mayor mr. Moore important thing that I have and only one but I want to make sure I get the day right Wednesday afternoon correct one to three in the council chambers we will be celebrating and honoring Rhonda for her eight years of great service excellent service on the council Out. citizens one to three this Wednesday I accept money Cash. <laughs> um, credit card debt. Credit card. <laughs> you have a card. Venmo. <laughs> yes, that's right. Yeah. So I'll set you up. With we Venmo. will see you Wednesday. Mega sign. Thank you. I appreciate that. All right. That's all I have, Mayor. Okay. Well, Alex already said that Rena and I would echo what he said. It was a uh, nice facility. Um, and it's only going to grow. So, and I guarantee you, there's never been that many cars in the. Hobby Lobby parking lot, whatever. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Bob, we, we, I want to know what we're going to do about this Wells Fargo deal. That bothers me that we're oh, yeah, that's right. cash checks. I talked to Fran today. I yeah. called this morning, and I explained the dilemma. First of all, we can't really do anything because it's not on the city. It's on Wells Fargo. No, we can. We don't have to write checks on that account. We well, have checking accounts in all the banks. Well, and we discussed that. Go ahead, Bob. We will be uh, going out for RFP for banking services in the near future. Uh, that was planned anyways. Um, in doing some research though, this is an issue not unique to Sioux City and that national banks have taken the position that uh, they will charge to cash a check um, if you do not have an account at their bank. And so we'll have to take that into account when we do our RFP. Well, hopefully our local banks feel differently. Okay. Right? I mean, Where that are we would at be on the whole fiber? Thing. What? Fiber, where are we at? We've met uh, again with Fibercom. Uh, most recently, I think it was two weeks ago. Um, I will follow up and, and find what the next steps are through WCICC. Okay, and Alex, the, those garbage bins that you're so proud of that have the garbage and recycling units in them, well, you better figure out a way to lock the doors because they don't stay shut. I've noticed Slinging that on a in couple. The wind and they're gonna get broken and they're gonna hit a car. So we better work on that because the door locks on those are as flimsy as anything I've ever seen. So See, and I wasn't able to go up next one, but I saw a couple of them open. Yeah. So Who would be? Where's that at? So the ones that are downtown, the joint ones, <laughs> when that I are saw the them. recycling and trash by, ones. Uh, the the one I saw that was open was by Bo Bodega. Mine was by the museum, and they're wide open. They're not shut at all. Yeah, it's the doors on the side that just okay. keep coming open. I did remember that. And where are we at on the standard office building? Anything on that? Um, it's now still on the, the fence, and I'll give you an attaboy for that. They're fixing it. So. It's on the agenda for uh, red tag demolition on January, I believe it's night. I keep saying 19th, but 16th, I think. 16th. Okay. I would hope the council would. Uh, <laughs> for which one, Bob? Are you one doing across that? the street, that's a joke, but I move we adjourn. Second. Reckon? Aye. Four. Aye. Scott. Aye. Water. Aye. Capron. Aye. Question? Here, here. Aye, aye. Huh? What was the question? Did you? I thought you. Had oh, I was asking Bob what property he was talking about. Oh, oh, I thought you meant what date. Sorry. Um, what is that guy? <clears throat> Anything? Is there an event? 